No vertebrate, whether living or extinct, has ever had an odd number of limbs. Think about it. There are bipeds, animals that walk on two feet, and quadrupeds. How many animals have we seen that have three or five limbs? Precisely none. There are no animals with an odd number of arms and legs and a backbone. No birds, no reptiles, no fish. Having an odd number of limbs is considered to be a forbidden phenotype. Phenotypes are observable physical properties of any organism and there simply aren't any vertebrates with an odd number of limbs. But having an extra limb here and there could offer a lot of advantages, especially with locomotion. And some animals actually have found workarounds and have developed gates that do use odd number of limbs. Pentapedalism can be observed when kangaroos slow hop. Kangaroos have four limbs of their own and their powerful muscular tails can support a lot of weight and the animals actually use these tails to propel off the floor when they're doing slow hops with just their hind legs. Tripedal locomotion is anecdotally observed in parrots. Not many people might have seen it, but those who own parrots and have seen them climb a tree or a vertical surface can see that they often use their faces or their beaks to climb. But is this true tripedalism as it is observed in kangaroos? Do parrots use their beaks to actually push off or do they actually just use it to stabilize themselves? This might not seem much of a difference, but in biology, it is a lot. If parrots and birds of the parrot family simply use their beak as a hook or an anchor to stabilize themselves when climbing, it means they're smart enough to understand how to use tools and they can use their beaks as what is called an effective limb. But if they're using their beak as a limb to actually pull themselves upward and propel forward or as a propulsive limb, the entire physiology and the nervous system of the parrot would have to adapt around it, meaning that parrots would have to adapt their entire feeding mechanism to also work as a walking mechanism. So which one is it? And how do parrots walk or climb? That is what researchers in this American study set out to confirm. The team obtained six lovebirds for the study. Lovebirds and parrots belong to the same family and birds of this family are generally referred to as parrots. These include birds we think of as parrots like the Indian ringneck parrots, which are technically called rose-ringed parakeets and African grey parrots, but also lovebirds, kias, cockatoos, cockatiels, budgies, lorries and lorikeets, macaws and so on. There are over 350 species of these birds that are called parrots and they all share common features. They have curved and strong beaks, they have strong legs and their feet have two digits facing forward and two backward. Many of them are brightly colored and their high intelligence combined with ability to perform mimicry makes them a common house pet, although they are not easy pets at all. So the researchers got these six lovebirds and got them to walk on a surface and climb a wall in the lab. This surface was fitted with sensors to see how much force was being exerted when climbing and in what direction. The surface was actually a plank that could be angled, so parrots walked on flat surfaces first and then scientists started to elevate it at increasing angles, getting the birds to walk on it, ultimately to climb absolutely vertically. They found that firstly, the more inclined the wall got, the more frequently the parrots used their beaks. When it was a fully vertical wall, the lovebirds used their beaks consistently to climb. They did not use their wings at any point, unlike some other birds that do. And at about 45 degrees of inclination, the tail also started to make contact with the surface along with the beak. The sensor data on this plank itself showed that the beaks, not the tails, were being used like a limb. They were not attaching like a hook or an anchor. They were pulling the parrots up and these beaks generated as much tensile strength as limbs did when pushing off. 
Parrots don't hop with both legs. They alternate their legs when walking. So they can't quickly hop up a tree. They have to run up and they use their beaks to obtain the force and stability required to do this. These findings are quite interesting because this now indicates that the beak, mouth, throat, head and neck, all of these parts that are involved in feeding are also involved in locomotion and movement. These systems have two functions. Imagine using your face when rock climbing and using your nose or mouth to pull your whole body up and propel your body forward. That is incredible power in the neck. Bird spines are stiff in certain regions to keep the head and body stable when flying. So it's the neck that has been adapted, adapted enough to provide the same force and stability as a limb. In many animals, especially humans, the neck is a tender region. How much force can we exert from our neck? We can't really do things with our neck. When we exercise, the neck is one of the things that we don't want to flex or stretch at awkward angles and we definitely don't want it to break. By contrast, powerful animals of prey have really strong necks. The amount of force that is generated by neck flexors across vertebrates is not quantified, but from these findings, we can at least easily tell that the parrot's neck can generate more force, more contractile forces for its body weight than humans. This is a completely new finding. The use of beaks as a limb to propel forward. The authors themselves call it an evolutionary novelty. And for now, this kind of behavior and this kind of physiology seems confined to the parrot family. To understand this better, the same team is trying to find out how frequently lovebirds and other kinds of parrots employ the style of tripedalism in their daily lives and how they evolved to do so in the first place.